This is the video review of the Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Metal Mutants Turtles plus Fugitoid 5 pack. It is a part of the new subline series entitled Dimension X, even though it does not mention it anywhere on this packaging. Reasons being is because these figures that come in this set are actually vac metalized chrome. At least their armor is. Fugitoid, on the other hand, is, uh, his whole body is pretty much chrome except for his arms and legs. But other than that, that's pretty much why this is called Metal Mutants. It is also, as far as I know, an exclusive to Target stores. Even though it doesn't mention it anywhere on this packaging, just like the fact that, hey, this is from the Dimension X series. I believe that's what it is because that's the only place I could actually find this set. I haven't come across it at Walmarts or Toys R Us or Kmarts or any other stores out there that sell Ninja Turtle figures. So if you're looking for it, your best bet is to check out Target because that's where I found mine and that's where you'll probably find yours or anybody else will find theirs. So let's get to it. Starting it off with the packaging obviously because that's how all these reviews roll. As you can see, it says here that the visors pop up on these figures, which is nice. And if that's not good enough, you can also see right here, it says pop-up visors and removable space gear. And it shows Leonardo smiling at you, wearing no armor whatsoever. So, that's cool. Uh, warning, choking hazard, small parts, not for children under three years. Uh, you know, this is a very big package. It's hard to get everything on here, but... There's also the Dimension X subline card packaging right there where it consists of all the Ninja Turtles wearing their space outfits for the new season that's coming soon. Flip it on the back and here's some more information. Uh, not much going on here, just some CGI renderings of the uh, Turtles and the Fugitoid. Um, it's not exactly 100% accurate, especially with the Fugitoid because nowhere on the show is the Fugitoid you know, reflective like this. He's actually just like white or something, some kind of like palish white. But yeah, on the back, they're just showing him as if it's like a vac metalized version of the Fugitoid figure, which it probably is consisting that you can actually see the uh, leg joints and the arm joints. So that's the figure, no doubt. But the figure doesn't look anything like this. And I'll tell you a little bit more when we get to the figure's review. But you know, I'm going to start this off with one figure at a time, because if I was to review all five of these figures in one video, this video would be an hour long. And I don't want to bore anybody to death, so let me just go wrap this up real quickly on the packaging by just explaining what's going on here. What is this theme all about? Well, if you saw the last season, and according to what you actually see here for a little bit of some information on what's going to happen next season, the fate of the Earth hangs in the balance. That being said, the Earth was destroyed, and it's up to the Turtles to save the world with help from their new ally, the Fugitoid. The Turtles are ready to battle evil everywhere. So that's pretty much it. That's what's going on here. So, taking the package out of the way, and the first figure I'm going to be reviewing out of this little mini-series is none other than... Leonardo, your leader in blue, who does anything it takes to get his ninjas through. That's right, we're going to start it off with Leonardo, rather than Raphael, my favorite Ninja Turtle character that I like to do first any chance I get. But, you know, it's just going to be a change of variety here. And there's a reason why I'm starting off with Leonardo first, because in all honesty, a while back at San Diego Comic-Con, there was this exclusive Leonardo figure that was decked out in vac metalized chrome, wearing a space design. It's pretty much the same figure here, except that this figure is 5 inches. That figure at San Diego Comic-Con was actually an 11-inch figure, and I'm sure it's going to get a mass retail release with all the other Ninja Turtle figures in 11-inch scale. But... That being said, it's the same figure. Same amount of articulation. Well, okay, maybe not at the legs, but it is the same amount of articulation everywhere else on that figure compared to this figure. But it's just for your standard action figure size. Five inches. But still, same figure. Um, I've got some good things to say about this figure, and I've got some bad things to say about this figure, and in all honesty, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the good things. Good things is, I like this figure. Bad thing about this figure is that, well, 
This is the figure that I'll be reviewing today in all honesty. This is the exact same figure. There's just a little bit of a difference here. Uh, the color variation is a little different. This figure is a little lighter than this figure. And of course, if you don't know what figure I'm talking about, this is the Battleshell figure that came out last year. So, uh, last wave, pretty much, they're using the same figures. As you can see, there is right there the hinge to open up the shell to store some weapons in the back or to take them out or vice versa. The only difference is in order to get this gimmick to work where you can put the armor on or take the armor off is that they had to cut a little bit of the belt off. So, unfortunately, there is no sheath. For storage for these new swords that I'm going to show in just a minute. There's no belt underneath this figure. Except for maybe the front. Just to give an illusion that if you take this belt piece off. He's still wearing his belt. And he's still got his uh, strap for his swords. Even though there's nothing on the back. So you get the idea. But yeah I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. It is the same exact figure. Only difference that I can really find is the head sculpts. Because the head sculpts are not the same. This head sculpt on the new Leonardo figure is actually a smile, while this one, the original Battleshell Leonardo figure, is more of a serious look. Which, you know, this one fits the theme for the upcoming season, in all honesty, because, you know, Leonardo and the other Turtles' home world, Earth, our world, was destroyed. So I wouldn't be in a happy mood. I'd be in a freaking pissed off mood. As a matter of fact, on this new sculpt, it's actually sculpted on, and it's a lot smaller just so that you can get the helmet to fit over this headpiece. So if you were thinking about removing this head and popping it onto this body for the gimmick, it does not work. You cannot get this headpiece to fit over the helmet. So I'm sorry to tell you that. I, I really do like the belt on this figure. It's really cool. It's got some nice attention to detail, which it doesn't do anything, but it's very nice looking, and that shiny, vacmetalized blue chrome works. I mean, it just looks great. And if you notice right here, the buckle actually represents the L, like the original 1980s Ninja Turtles cartoon, and the figures, how every character had their first initial letter on their belt buckle. Leonardo's got his right here, and I love that. I really do. That is awesome. Do I expect it to be on the CGI designs for the cartoon? I seriously doubt it, but it's a nice throwback. I love that. It doesn't get any better than that. Now, that being said, it's time to get to his accessories, and there's quite a bit for this figure. So, here is his space helmet and chest piece, pretty much one and the same, is a single sculpt. Just like it showed off on the package, you can flip up the visor, and then you would see the Ninja Turtles face underneath, or you could just close it and still see the Ninja Turtles face underneath. So, we'll get to that when we get to it, but right now I'm just showing it off. It is nice, in all honesty, outside of the other Ninja Turtle figures, this is the only different piece. So... And there's that. He also has some, like, uh, uh, I, I don't know what you would actually say here, but it's like thigh guards. It's some armor that you attach to his thighs, which is in that same vacmetalized chrome blue color as his belt, which is nice. A little different, so that's cool. Variety is always nice. He's got some arm gauntlets or wrist gauntlets, whichever one you want to call them, and they are in that very nice chrome silver color, which is cool. I, I like it. Um, these don't feel brittle at all, but, you know, sometimes back metalized chrome pieces do have a tendency to break over time, so just be careful. But, anyway, the real last piece to his uh, armor is just these like claw hand things that you just slide onto his hands which is not that easy to do not that easy to remove and over time may actually break so just be a little careful you are forewarned so there's that and last but not least for any accessories this figure comes with here are his twin katana swords and just to let you know they are hard Plastic. Cool. Okay, so before it's time to play dress up, let's take a quick look at the articulation on this figure. And that being said, 
it is the same amount of articulation that the battle shell Leonardo has because obviously it's the same figure! Just a little bit of some differences to make this gimmick work! I cannot express that anymore! This is of Leonardo's armor. Let's start from going down to up because that's the way I find it a little more easier on these figures. So, that being said, we will start with the thigh guards, whatever you call it. So, taking this piece right here, I don't exactly know which one's the front, which one's the back. I don't really think it matters, but just slide it on like so. Slide it on like so. They go in very easily. There's like no problem whatsoever there with those pieces. That being said, that's really it for the easy pieces outside of the helmet, but I'll save that for last. Now, we'll just go ahead and put these pieces on. Make sure I'm putting them on the right way because you can tell there's a difference. So, there's one. I'll take this wrist piece right here and slide it on. It's a little bit of a trick with this arm for some reason, but... You know, if you actually go a little higher, you actually get enough room to actually slide it down. And there you go. Now it's on. And now, these. These are kind of hard because they like to get stuck. They don't like to go all the way in. And if you're not careful, over time they will break. But that's about as far as I'm going to get on the right hand. Let's try the left hand. Maybe we'll have a little more luck. And that's not the case, but there we go, I got it. And no, let me try this one more time. That one went on easier, but nah, it's, that's as good as it's going to get. So there's that. And now for the helmet. Now you would probably think it would be easy just to pop this on, but as you can see, it does not go on yet. In order to do that, you have to unlock the visor, because then you got enough clearance to actually slide it over his head, and then... In order to keep it from moving so much, you have to peg the visor back in underneath the head, which is kind of easier said than done, but if you work with it, just bear with me. There you go. So, as you can see, there is his space outfit, space suit, whatever. It's cool looking. I like it. It's uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, what, what else can I say? So, yeah, it's cool. I really do like it. Here are his swords. Go ahead and put those in his hands. These, like, whatever he's got on his hands here, really take up all the space in his open hands. So, you've got very little room to actually work with when he's gripping his swords. So, that's kind of a bummer. Also, also a bummer is the fact that he does not have weapon storage there's nowhere to store his swords and that's unfortunate but other than that he's a really cool figure and i will say outside of not being able to turn his head and let you flip up the visor his articulation with all this armor bits on really is not hindered so you can get a lot of posability out of this figure that's cool I, I wish other figures could be this very special. I love the fact that these figures have multiple points of articulation where the, the villain line fails completely. But other than that, I mean, the fact that none of his posability whatsoever, none of his points of articulation are hindered because of the armor makes this figure a success. I, I love it. I love this figure. I don't care if it's the battle shell figure again. The fact is, there's some changes that really makes this figure worth the buy. Now, yes, it is a little disappointing. I mean, you could call it a nitpick that, yeah, it's the battle shell figure. But overall, the changes really do work. This is a cool figure. And this is just one out of four other figures that I have to review from this set. So, is it really worth? Out of all these figures, will the results really turn out to be worth the buy, which is none other than 50 to 60 bucks? We'll just have to wait and see. So that's going to do it for this review. So it's time to move on with the next Ninja Turtle figure in mind, and, you know, you'll see it when it comes up. So uh, until the next video review of this little mini-series of Dimension X figures, that's, uh, that's it. So questions, comments, leave them down below. And this is Sonic Ranger signing out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you whenever you see me.